And the scripture says in Proverbs chapter 14, verse 12, there is a way that seems right to a man, but its end, and the word end here is the Hebrew word, the outcome, the end of that way is death. There is a way that seems right to a man, but its end is the way to death. If you were to stay on that way, the result of it is going to be death. You know what this tells us tonight, everybody? This tells us that just because something seems right, and just because something feels right, doesn't mean it is right. You know, the Bible tells us that before people are given new life by the Spirit, before they're given new life by the Holy Spirit, the word for the Spirit is, is like a wind, a living energy that comes into a person, divine energy, new life. The Bible tells us before a person is given new life by the Holy Spirit, they are slaves to their thoughts and feelings. That is the average person you see walking around, the average person you see on television, the average politician, the average, the, the normal human being, apart from the transforming, regenerating presence of God's Spirit, the Bible teaches us, is a slave to their passions and their feelings. In fact, listen to what the Bible says in Ephesians 2, verse 1. Writing to Christians, it says, You were dead in your trespasses and sins. Following the course of this world, following the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work among all the sons of disobedience, among whom we all once lived in the passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of the body and mind, and were by nature under wrath, by nature God's enemies. So that is the natural way we are. We naturally tend to want to follow my feelings. I naturally tend to want to follow my desires. And that's why oftentimes people say that. Follow your heart, they say to you. And what the Bible tells us tonight is this, is that no, just because something seems right and just because it feels right doesn't mean it is right. There are going to be things in your life that seem right to you, but the end of it will be your own destruction, and in some cases, eternal destruction. You know, the Bible tells us that the human heart, apart from the saving, life-giving, renewing power of God, is deceitful and desperately sick. Jeremiah 17, verse 9 says, the heart is deceitful above all things. Imagine that. God, the Bible says, who fashions the hearts of us all, knows this about humanity. He knows the most deceitful thing in the world is your heart. Jeremiah 17, verse 9. He says it's deceitful above all things. And he says, your heart is also desperately sick. By the way, this is a Hebrew word that means incurable. Your heart is terminally ill unless God steps in with the life-giving, renewing, regenerating power of His Spirit. You are going to be a slave to a deceitful, desperately sick heart. And the Bible says in Jeremiah 17, verse 9, you can't understand your heart. That's why you're making a very bad mistake if you're going to spend your life doing what you think seems right and feels right because many of those things are going to actually be death. The Bible tells us, men and women, that our feelings often lie. The Bible says, for example, in James chapter 1 and verse 14, every man is tempted when he is lured by his own desire. The word lure is the kind of thing you think when you go fishing. What does a lure do? It deceives this fish. 
he's out swimming in one of our wonderful little streams out here, or he's out in Narragansett Bay, and all of a sudden, plop, here comes a wonderful shrimp out of nowhere, right? Wow, what a day! <laughs> he bites down on it, and what he doesn't know was that lure had a hook, and it's going to be his death. The Bible says all of us are lured and enticed by our own desires. In other words, every human being, the Bible says, has unique, particular desires of his own. We all don't have the same. There are some human beings who particularly feel, have feelings a certain way that many other people don't share. And what the world tells them to do is follow your desires. This is, this is natural. Do what you feel. And the scripture is saying, listen to me, I'm your creator. There is a way that seems right to a man, but its end is your own destruction. Your heart is two characteristics. The creator of it says, the one who knows you better than anybody else, that your heart is deceitful above all things and desperately sick. Just know this, your feelings will often lie to you. And what they don't tell you is this. And I want you guys to all turn with me to Philippians chapter 3, verse 18. Philippians chapter 3 and verse 18 Look at the scripture says is the true end of people who walk away, who don't follow Christ, but follow their own desires and feelings. Philippians chapter 3 verse 18 says, For many of whom I have often told you and now tell you even with tears, walk as enemies of the cross of Christ. And what is their end? Verse 19, their end is destruction. Their God is their belly. They glory in their shame with minds set on earthly things. Who are the people whose life is going to end in destruction? It's the people whose God are their desires. Their God is their belly. Whatever they have a feeling for, whatever they have a passion for, whatever they have a taste for, that's their God. They're ruled by their body. That person's end is going to be destruction. The person who glories in shameful things and the person who sets their mind on earthly things, the end of that life is destruction. Do you guys know if you read the entire Old Testament, one of the worst presentations of the children of Israel in the entire Old Testament is the book of Judges. You know how Judges says several times in it, and the last verse of it says, that everyone did what was right in his own eyes. That was how God summarized them. The last verse of the book of Judges, Judges 21, 25. If you can describe Israel with one sentence, everyone did what was right in his own eyes. Now, guys, that's a culture you and I live in now. Everyone says, hey, whatever is true to you, be true to yourself. No, don't do that. There is a way that seems right to a man, but its end is the way of death. Now, now ladies and gentlemen, you, you know what the truth is? God is the truth, not your feelings. Not your feelings about him. Not your feelings about heaven and hell. Not your feelings about right and wrong. Not your feelings about human sexuality. Not your feelings about justice. It doesn't matter what you feel. God is the truth. In other words, men and women, truth is not subjective. That means when something is subjective, it means it's up to your personal opinion and feeling. Truth is not something different for every person. That's a culture you and I live in right now. Whatever is true to you, that, that or I've heard people say, that's my truth or the God that I worship, he's fine with this. Truth is not subjective. Truth is objective. That means it's a fact. It's an unbiased reality. It doesn't have feelings. It just is. You know what the greatest and the ultimate truth is, men and women? God is the ultimate truth. 
The Bible says in 2 Samuel 22, verse 31, This God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord proves true. You watch. As your life goes on, everything that God said was going to happen will happen. In fact, there was one encounter that Jesus had, if you remember this, the night that he was going to be crucified, he was sitting with his disciples and he said to them, I am the way and the truth. And then later on in the morning when he was being interviewed, before he was right before he was going to crucify him, Pilate has a one-on-one -on -one conversation with Jesus. And Jesus says to him, for this reason I was born into the world. And for this purpose I came, to testify to the truth. That's why he came, everybody. So what I want to do, and you know what this verse is telling me basically then, everybody? This verse is telling me, don't follow your feelings, follow your father. That's what it's telling me. Don't follow your feelings, follow your father. The Bible tells us in Psalm 16, verse 11, you make known to me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. God, my father, you will make me know the path of life. Help me not to follow my feelings. Help me to follow you. The Bible says in Psalm 119, 105, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Lord, I'm feeling lots of things. My body feels a certain way. I have all kinds of emotions. I could be drawn this way. I could be drawn that way. But I want you to direct me because I know that your word proves true. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 2 and verse 1, my son, if you receive my words, and treasure up my commandments with you, verse 9 says, then you will understand equity and justice in every right path. When you've really gone to your father first and heard from him, then you'll finally understand what justice is. I remember this summer in June when the big Black Lives Matter, 10,000 people marching to the state house, they were screaming and yelling. And I was out there with a few of us standing at the state house. And we stand there, and we stood there, we held up signs. One of them said, no Jesus, no peace. K-N-O-W Jesus, K-N-O-W peace. We held up a sign, Proverbs chapter 29 says, evil men do not understand justice, but the righteous do. And these guys were up in the face of the police officer swearing at them. At one time, they pressed them in. I thought, wow, this guy, if they came, they could overtake them. And I saw this summer down here on Westminster Street when some of these windows were smashed in and people's property that did not belong to them was destroyed as though that was justice. The Bible says if you want to understand justice, listen to your father, not your feelings. You know what we want to learn to do, everybody? We want to learn how to take all of our feelings and thoughts and submit them to our Father. Submit them to the truth. Say, Lord, I don't know if this feeling is from you or not. Sometimes, by the way, your feelings are. We're going to talk about that in a little bit. Apart from God, your Father, apart from his empowering, renewing, transforming spirit, if it's just your human heart, the Bible says your heart has two characteristics. It is deceitful above all things, and it's desperately sick. So you're not wise if you listen to it. What you want to learn to do is take your feelings and thoughts as a human being and submit them to the truth. Okay, Lord, before I act on these feelings, I want to follow you about it. Are these feelings from you or not? Don't follow your feelings, follow your father. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5, casting down imaginations and every thought 
that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and taking captive every thought to obey Christ. I was talking to a pastor friend of mine a couple days ago out in North Carolina, and he was sharing me different guys he knows, other guys in the ministry really struggling, and he was really discouraged, you know. And his name is Ted, like me. And I said, Ted, listen, I just want you to remember the scripture says, whatever is born of God will overcome the world. And this is the victory that will overcome the world, our faith. But what we've got to learn to do, I said this to the guys and men becoming faithful the other day, Deuteronomy 5, verse 9, 15, verse 9 says, take care lest there be any unworthy thought in you. Like the Bible says, Guard your heart with all diligence, for from it flow all the streams of your life. You've got to be very careful. And I've told you guys this in the past, you know, with Experience Rhode Island tours. We go down to the reservoir down there in the autumn. It's a beautiful scene. And we get out of Plainfield Pike and let everyone walk down and tell them the story of, of the reservoir. Do you know when you go, do you know that Rhode Island has some of the most beautiful and cleanest drinking water in all of America? And the reason why that is, there are signs posted all around that reservoir. No fishing, no boating, no swimming, no nothing. Because they want to keep it pure. You know what we got to learn to do is really to deal, when, when the thoughts come in, take them captive and submit them to the truth. Lord, is this feeling from you? Is this thought from you? Don't act on it first. Submit it first. What's the passage many of us have memorized in here? Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make straight your paths. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, the word acknowledge means bring it to him, and he will make straight your path. Don't follow your feelings. Follow your father. Look at Proverbs chapter 4. I want you to turn that. I want to look at several passages in Proverbs. Look at Proverbs chapter 4, verse 10. I think Ryan has memorized this verse. Proverbs 4, verse 10. Hear my son, or maybe, I think Jake did, or do you do Ryan as well? Both did. Both did. Hear my son and accept my words that the years of your life may be many. I have taught you the way of wisdom. I have led you in the paths of uprightness. When you walk, your step will not be hampered, and if you run, you will not stumble. The reason why even many of God's children are stumbling and bumbling their way through life is they're not listening to their father. They're following their feelings. And the Lord says, listen, I've taught you the way. Follow me, and when you run, you won't stumble. Look at the next chapter, Proverbs 5. Notice verse 1, my son, see how he talks to you like a father? My son, be attentive to my wisdom, incline your ear to my understanding, that you may keep discretion, that means make good choices, and your lips may guard knowledge for the lips, and here's one of the biggest threats, the lips of a forbidden woman drip honey and her speech is smoother than oil, but in the end, just like Proverbs 14 says, in the end she is bitter as wormwood, that's a type of poison. Sharp as a two-edged sword. Her feet go down to death. Her steps follow the path to Sheol. That's the grave. Notice this woman, by the way, this forbidden woman. She does not ponder the path of life. She never thinks about it. She just follows her feelings. Her way is wandered. She does not know it. And now, O oh sons, listen to me and do not depart from the words of my mouth. Keep your way far from her and do not go near the door of her house lest you give your honor to others and your years to the merciless, lest strangers take their fill of your strength and your laborers go to the house of a foreigner, and at the end of your life you groan when your flesh and body are destroyed, and you say, how I hated discipline and my heart despised reproof. I did not listen to the voice of my teachers or incline my ear to my instructors. I am at the brink of utter ruin in the assembled congregation. See, there is a way that seems right to a man, but its end is the way of death. Notice the next chapter, Proverbs 6, verse 20. I know some of you guys memorized this one. My son, keep your father's commandment and forsake not your mother's teaching. Bind them on your heart always. Tie them around your neck. When you walk, they will lead you. When you lie down, they will watch over you. 
When you await, they will talk with you. What we want to learn to do, everybody, with our many, many feelings and thoughts is to take them and submit them to the truth before we act. Fast forward to Proverbs chapter 12 and verse 15. Proverbs 12, verse 15, The way of a fool is right in his own eyes, but a wise man listens to advice. And whose advice is better for you to listen to than your own creator? Same chapter says in verse 28, In the path of righteousness and light is life, and in its pathway there is no death. There are lots of paths that will lead to death, but if you follow this path, there is no death there. Look at Proverbs 14, verse 16. One who is wise is cautious. That's actually a Hebrew word that means he fears. And it's talking about he fears God. Remember the fear of the Lord is this quality. To be have a deep respect for the awesome and holy presence of God that caused you to turn away from evil and do what is good. One who is wise has this quality and turns away from evil. But a fool is reckless and careless. He doesn't submit his thoughts and feelings to God. He just goes, follows them like an ox to the slaughter. And what happens? He gets slaughtered. Look at Proverbs 16, verse 2. It tells us in Proverbs 16, verse 2, all the ways of a man are pure in his own eyes. But what does the Lord do? The Lord weighs the spirit. That means the thing that's animating him the thing that's inspiring him. What is the thing that's inspiring what you're doing? That's what God is watching. We can all justify what we're doing. We can, sometimes you've got teenagers or even young adults making bad decisions. Their parents are concerned about it. They're speaking with them about it. And they can justify it, apparently. But not to God. If it's, if it's animated, if it's inspired by wrong motives. Look at the Bible says in Proverbs 21, verse 2. Same idea, Proverbs 21, verse 2. Every way of a man is right in his own eyes, but the Lord weighs the heart. And guys, that's what I think a lot of times we have to do. When these feelings come in, these thoughts come in that seem right to us, they feel right. One of the biggest questions our Father is going to put a microscope on is, if you were to do this, why would you do it? What is inspiring it? If you know the underlying motivation is not a good one, you know that's not from your father. I'm going to show you a couple more Proverbs. Look at chapter 20 and verse 18. Chapter 20 and verse 18, plans are established by counsel, by wise guidance, wage war. Look at 24, verse 6. For by wise guidance you can wage your war in an abundance of counselors there is victory. And who would be a better counselor for you as you deal with different thoughts and feelings than your own father? Go to him for his wisdom. I want to show you two more Proverbs. Chapter 23 and verse 19. Look what it says. Hear my son and be wise and direct your heart in the way. In the same chapter, verse 26. My son, give me your heart and let your eyes observe my ways. Now, men and women, tonight, the lesson of this proverb is don't follow your feelings, follow your father. Give him your heart and let him show you the way that you ought to go. You know, David says in Psalm 25 and verse 4, Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. For you I wait all the day long. Lord, I want you to show me the way. The Bible says, For those who fear him, the Lord instructs in the way they should choose. Proverbs 25 and verse 12. The Bible says in Psalm 86, 11, Teach me your way, O Lord. I will walk in your truth. Unite my heart to fear your name. In Psalm 119, verse 37, the Bible says, Give me life in your ways. And Psalm 119, verse 59 says, When I think on my ways, I turn my feet to your testimonies. 
Lord, there is a way right now that seems right to me. And, and by the way, and sometimes it is going to be the right way. But what we want to learn to do is first take all my feelings and thoughts and submit them to the truth. Father, when I think in my ways, I'm going to turn my feet to your testimonies. The Bible says in Psalm 139, search me, O God. I want you to take a flashlight and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts and see if there be any grievous way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Lord, without you, my heart is deceitful above all things and it's desperately sick. I'm asking you to take the searchlight into my heart, Lord. Weigh my heart. And if there is some wrong way in me, get it out of me, Lord. Lead me in the way that's everlasting. You know, guys, how a person really changes is when they believe the gospel and they receive God's spirit and he gives them, he breathes into them the breath of life. The Bible says in Romans 6, verse 17, but thanks be to God that though you were once slaves of sin, you became obedient from the heart to the teaching to which you're committed and having been set free from sin, have become slaves of righteousness. Notice me Romans chapter 8 and verse 5. Romans chapter 8 and verse 5. Romans chapter 8 and verse 5. What does it say? It says, those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit, for to set the mind on the flesh is death. That's what Proverbs is saying. There's a way that seems right to a man, but its end is the way of death. If you follow your feelings, if you follow your flesh, you're, you're going down the path of destruction. But the mind set on the Spirit is life and peace. For the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. For those who are in the flesh cannot please God. Verse 9, you however are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if in fact the spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the spirit of Christ does not belong to him. Now notice verse 11 of Romans chapter 8. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. So then, brothers, we are debtors not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. You don't have to obey your desires and passions like you did before. You've been given liberating life when you believe the gospel. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. You know who Christians are? They're people that follow their father, not their feelings. And this happens through God's patient parenting. We have to learn many, many times we do follow our feelings and we find out it hurts. What we want to learn to do is follow our Father. The Bible tells us in Galatians chapter 5, verse 24, those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified their passions and their desires. If you are led by the Spirit, also keep in step with the Spirit. Learn to follow Him. Men and women, tonight this Proverbs lesson to us is, don't follow your feelings, follow your Father. Don't follow your feelings unless and except when your feelings come from the Lord. And sometimes they do. The Bible says in Psalm 37, verse 4, Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. The Bible says in Philippians chapter 2, and verse 13, It is God who is at work in you both to will, that's to desire, and to do his good pleasure. How does God make known to you what it is that you ought to do? He does it three ways, through the direct commands and principles of Scripture.
There are plenty of places where God says you shall not or you shall. You know what God wants you. There's no question. There are other times when God doesn't give you a direct command because there are, there are a thousand situations human beings face. But instead, God will give a principle. For example, he will say, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it to my glory. In other words, only do this thing if it will show how great I am. If you, if you do this and it hurts my glory, you know it's not for me. The second way God makes his will known to his people is not only through direct commands and principles, but through the desires he puts in your heart. The Bible says God is at work in you both to will and to do his good pleasure. So I have these feelings come in. God, is this from you? Well, does this feeling that you have, would it obey a command of scripture or principle? Yes. Then it's probably from the Lord. Would it not disobey a command or prince of the Lord? Then pursue it. And there, here's a third way God makes his will known. Through providence, through the way he guides and directs the circumstances of your life. The Bible says when you commit your way to the Lord, trust in him, he will act. Look at Proverbs 16, verse 9. This is an awesome verse. Proverbs chapter 16 and verse 9 says, The heart of man plans his way, but the Lord establishes. The word establish means determines, directs his steps. So we're out here trying to figure our lives out, and along the way, now by the way, you should pay attention, pay attention providentially. Where did God and his guidance put you in the world? In what family? In what church? At what time? Who do you work with? These are, all, these are all things that God has determined and directed. Pay attention to providentially what he's doing in your life. And then as you live your life in the providence of God, pay attention to who are the people God's put in my life. What are the desires I have? God, are these desires from you? I want to bring them to you first and ask, do these desires obey a command or principle? Then, then, then I'm going to pursue this desire. Does this desire not disobey a command or principle? If it's a good desire, I'm going to pursue it. And if God in his providence doesn't have that for you, he won't let you do it. We see this throughout the book of Acts. Where Paul says, I want to go to this town. I wanted to go here. The Holy Spirit wouldn't let me. I wanted to hear, and, and many times it's because he wanted to get him somewhere else. So here's what we do. We're human beings. We're planning our way. The Lord is directing your steps. Pay attention to how he's directing you. Notice Proverbs 20 and verse 24. Proverbs 20 and verse 24. A man's steps are from the Lord. How then can man understand his way? Hey, the Lord is providentially arranging your life. Where you were born, when you were born, the people that are in your life, the people that you're meeting now, the gifts he's given you, all those things are not by accident. You are his workmanship, the Bible says, created in Christ Jesus for good works that he long ago planned that you would do. But the point is, the overall point of tonight's proverb is don't follow your feelings, follow your father. The purpose that he came into this world was to testify to the truth. He is the truth. And every word of God will prove true. So take your feelings and take your thoughts and understand there are many times in your life when your feelings are going to lie to you. There are other times in your life your feelings are not. They are actually true. They are from the Lord. No matter what, take your feelings and your thoughts, bring them to your Father, submit them to Him. And then He will direct your paths. Let's pray. Lord, help us to learn to get into this pattern in our life 
to not follow our feelings, but follow our Father. And Lord, we thank you that you have promised that as we do that, as we trust in the Lord with all our heart and do not lean on our own understanding, but in all of our ways acknowledge him, you will make straight our paths. As we delight in you, you will give us the desires of our heart. As we commit our way to you, trust in you, you will act. Lord, I pray that everyone who hears or watches this sermon tonight will cease from this moment on following their own heart and feelings. May they understand from now on truth is not subjective. It's not a matter of their own personal truth. There is objective fact, undeniable reality, and it's called God. And Lord, help us to learn to come to you with everything we think and feel. Lord, you have told us in the path of righteousness is life, and in its pathway there is no death. We thank you for this, Lord. Teach us this lesson deep in our heart, and may it bear beautiful fruit. We pray in Jesus' name.